Brady, you guys ran the ball very effectively on Saturday against a team that hadn't been giving up a lot of yards in the round. What was working out for you guys? Uh, I feel like our calls and our communication up front definitely helped Jarquez break holes. And, you know, they had a lot of schemed up plays, like a lot of pressure plays. So just to pick those up and get him holes, that was a major thing for us. So I feel like that was the most key thing we was going throughout the week because, you know, they were like the number four in the nation that uh, run defense. So I feel like we would just had to be real keyed up on what we were doing up front. And Jarquez kind of. Put, it, put everyone on his back and kind yeah, of carry some guys and stuff like that. How, how, did, how does that pump you up as an old full line? Man, we were just talking about that the other day. Like, after the game, we were like, man, when he breaks a long one, like, just seeing him run, you know, he, he, that, he almost kicks his head the way he runs. So, it's like, <laughs> like, just seeing him run and break a long one, that just excites you because, you know, like, all five guys up front did their job. So, we had, like, 14, 15 supposed to run. So, that's just, like, a dream come true for our offensive line. Right. Coach Frey said first they thought maybe you weren't quite big enough mm -hmm. and, and that uh but talk about how much you loved Auburn and uh, that that seemed to be something that pushed you to yes, be, be to overcome whatever limitations yes sir you just talked about that a little bit yeah my uh size definitely come into play and I was thinking about that going into the Kentucky game you know going against guys that are like six five six six you know they think they, they can push me around, but it's not it's not that easy because I've always dealt with that my whole life. Just going against guys in high school like Peter Woods and Tamari Parker, like those dudes are always bigger than me. But they, you know, you just know how this is gonna be with me. So, but yeah, uh, yeah, and Auburn, I love Auburn. You know, I just want to go out there. And I'm playing for the name in front of my chest and the back of my chest. So I, I'm back of my back. So I'm just thinking about those two names on every time I step on the field because I want to put on a show for everybody. You know, people pay a lot of money to go sit in the stands and watch us play. So I feel like that's a, a reward for them to give a give their full effort to them. Braden, what do you think was the turning point in this game? Maybe something that happened different that hadn't happened in the uh, recent weeks. I feel like both sides of the ball were 100%. Like we were both going at it. You know. When we got down 10-0 and uh, we had that turnover, I feel like nobody, you know, shook. You know, we were still locked in. Like, I feel like that was, like, the turning point because I feel like the past few games when we had a turnover or something like that or something bad go happen, we just put our hands down in this game. I don't know why it was different, but it just felt different on the sideline. Like, just going on the field, you know, we were just, you know, we were just confident what we were doing. I feel like we were real confident in the game plan and our players and stuff like that. How, how much confidence does it give you moving forward going against a guy like Deion Walker and having some positive reps against them? Uh, I felt pretty good in the run game. I feel like I'm one of the best in the run game. So in the passing game, he's pretty good too. So I, I just knew it was going to be a good competition. So I was pretty, you know, skinned up on him all week. And I just, you know, I gave up one sack to him, and, you know. But that's a first round draft pick. We were going at it all night. So I feel like that was a good test for me, my, especially my first game going against a dude that's going to be drafted first round. So was, he did a good job all night. You said that. You said that. Um, crap, I just forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Oh, said that he at halftime. He said that it was finally time to learn how to win a game. Mm -hmm. How would you guys kind of react to that and kind of take that out of the second half? I just I feel like everybody knew we were going to win that game. Like just going into the game all week, you know, we just had a we had a really good Tuesday and Wednesday practices and like and a really good Thursday. So when you have those days and practice, you know, you you feel really confident in what you're doing and. And at halftime, I feel like everybody was cool, calm, and collective. You know, even though we did that 14 man stuff, it's yeah. all right. You know, we we knew we were gonna come out there on offense and execute, which we did. Have you uh, been an Auburn fans your whole life? Uh, oh, and people always ask me if I'm a fan of people, but like of schools. But I've never been like a fan of a school. But I just like the players on the team, like. There's different players on the team. Like I used to love Cam Newton, Nate Marshall, and I love Trey Mason though. Yeah, that was one of my favorites back in the day. So I used to just watch players back in the day, but I ain't never really watched a team. Did, did uh, what Jarquez is saying, did he kind of remind you of what Trey Mason did yes, sir. in the championship game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's up there in the conversation with Trey Mason for sure. So. You, uh, uh, so you say, you, but you, it's all those guys that you like to watch. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what led you to Auburn? Uh, I think what led me to Auburn was moving down here my junior year in high school. I feel like just getting on a, on the campus early, you know, being around the environment every day, just getting to love it. You know, my family here just 
closer to home, you know, it's just a good environment. I just want to be here, play for Auburn. Obviously, you would like to have won some more games, but has it been what you expected it to be? Uh, it's not what I expected it to be this season, but I feel like going into next year. Oh, yeah. Being here. Oh, yeah, being here is, you know, all the guys in the locker room, man, I love them, man, like, like they're my brothers. So I feel like we got a good team, and we never quit on each other. So I feel like that's a big part of our team. Braden, everybody's talking about Vandy's offense, mm -hmm. Pavia. What have you seen from their front? They've been pretty active. Uh, I feel like they're pretty keyed up, you know, just like Kentucky. Like, I feel like they're the same defense, but I feel like Vandy, you know, more schemed up, you know, more sound. They're not going to uh, miss a line or get out of gaps and stuff like that. So we just had to be more, you know, vocal and stuff like that on the offensive line and in the backfield. So just to protect, uh, practicing like what we did last week, you know, just doing the same thing, just the same routine, just to get better. Braden, what was this past offseason like for you, losing weight, moving? I, you had repped at guard last year as well, but transitioning kind of from center to guard a little bit more. What was this offseason kind of like for you to get ready for this year? Uh, it was definitely hard, but like mentally and physically it was hard, but I feel like I came overcome it, and I gave, gave all my glory to God, man. He just helped me out a lot and through, through a lot of situations, and that's the only reason I'm here today is because he pushed me through because I feel like it, without God, I wouldn't be where I am today. Thanks, Brady. Thanks, Brady.